cruising through these streets, got one thing on my mind I've been thinking about you since we kissed that first time Took it slow and we made it right Bit of me and my perfect type Put a ring on it now, baby, I might man Three years and she my whole life she just Hey guys, to welcome to episode 5 of season 2 of the Buskers by the Lake podcast Where we're giving you guys the inside scoop on some of the awesome performing artists featuring at this year's festival My name is Lauren and I'm your host for this year Today, I have with me on Zoom, the absolutely magnificent Shane, aka The Space Cowboy. Hi, how are ya? Very good. Yeah, how are you doing? Really, really good. So excited to talk to you. I was talking about it all day, actually. Like, oh, I get to interview this guy and, and he does all these really cool things. I geeked out a little bit with this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you don't mind, we'll just get straight into it. Tell everybody a little bit about what you do. Uh, yeah, so I'm a full-time performing artist. I'm a, an extreme stunt, circus stunt performer. So at the moment, I hold 55 Guinness World Records. So <laughs> this I'm is Australia's why I was most excited. prolific Guinness World Records breaker, which is kind of cool. So cool. So I hold Guinness World Records for the fastest knife throwing, whip cracking, chainsaw juggling on a three-meter tall unicycle. I catch speeding arrows with my bare hand while I'm folded. Um, I shoot lightning bolts out of my fingertips. I stand on top of a one million volt transformer with a, with bare feet and, put, and conduct over a million volts of electricity through my flesh and shoot the lightnings out of my out, lightning bolts out of my fingertips and swallow a sword and spray electricity from the blade down my throat. As you can see, this is why I was so uh, excited. (laughs) Most recent Guinness World Record that I broke was actually just like uh, just over a month ago. Mm -hmm. It was for the the launch of the Ocean Road magazine, Mm -hmm. which I was I did a photo shoot for the cover of the magazine where I swallowed a huge stack of swords. Uh, I believe it was uh, 24 swords that I swallowed. And so that made it onto the cover. And then for the launch of the magazine, I broke the Guinness World Record for the most swords swallowed and that's 29 swords swallowed down the throat at the same time. Absolutely incredible. Like I was saying, this is exactly why I was so excited to talk to you. Just a man of so many different missions. And I just, it blows my mind as I was, you know, doing my research to talk to you. I was just that's, like scrolling so through like, wow. There's clinking going on. Oh I've got a few, a few of my Guinness World Records here. So these are some of the ones that I got on the, wow. the kind of more recent TV shows where they give you the, yeah. give you the medals when you're on the show. Uh, oh, I got this one on the Italian Guinness World Record TV show when I dragged a cart with six girls in it and a pile of cement slabs that weighed 411 kilograms. And I dragged all of that weight for 10 metres across the studio floor from nothing more than fish hooks in my eye sockets. <gasps> <laughs> Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah, so I do some pretty pretty crazy things. <laughs> oh, you do. You definitely do. Definitely a bit of a daredevil side to you. I can definitely see that. Um, but how did it all get started? Like what age were you and like how how did you start getting into this sort of thing? My sister had a little unicycle that I learnt to ride when I was about eight years old. And I rode it to school and rode it to the local markets. People would start throwing money at me and I knew I was onto something good. <laughs> so I just kept kept going there and I started uh, travelling around Australia. Um, I, I went to Cabell Avenue in the Gold Coast and was kind of every weekend I would go there and do shows while I was um, still at school when I was like 13, 14 years old. And there were some amazing like international street performers there and kind of learnt, learnt the way the way of the, the street shows. And then uh, when I was 17, I went to, the, went to the UK for the first time and I've been back and forth every summer, like following the summer mm-hmm. uh, since then. So a never-ending summer basically of festival circuits until COVID happened and then I had a few years off. But, um, but right. this year already, you know, the, the gigs are starting to come back in. I... I did a TV show a couple of months ago in in Paris, in France. Um, that was with my uh, one million volt lightning act, uh, shooting electricity from my fingers and the sword. And 
Uh, yeah, I'm about to go to Glastonbury Festival and oh. Spain and Norway. So it's all kind of happening again. So, so cool. It's, yeah, it's nice to be back on the road. Definitely. Yeah. It's been such a hard couple of years with not being able to go anywhere or do anything. So it's sort of, you know, you can really see why you'd want to get out itching, itchy feet, ready to sort of get back out and travel. And Yeah, well, it's uh, I guess it's particularly uh, frustrating for a travelling performer because, well, uh, I'm used to being in a different city pretty much every weekend. Mm. So I, I base myself in Byron Bay. Uh, I was born in Byron Bay. I, I still call it home. But my my home is definitely on the road and at, in fields and on festival sites and, yeah. and things like that. So so it was um yeah. So it's been a very very challenging couple couple of years or three years. Um, but I I guess I I always need to be creative and I always need to kind of uh keep my hands dirty so i when when the shows kind of um all the gigs were cancelled and there was <laughs> no one was allowed out i started painting at at home and and then since then i've opened a gallery in byron bay i've done oh, wow. uh four big uh, art exhibitions and and now i'm selling art all over the world so it's been <laughs> quite a an amazing uh, shift and transformation which I would never have done if it wasn't uh, due to COVID. True well there you go so it's sort of been a bit of a like a blessing and a curse in a way. Yeah yeah exactly and actually I'm going to be doing I'm going to have a I just spoke to Cindy about it at the Buskers by the Lake and she came down to my latest exhibition in Byron mm. Bay and I'm going to have a uh, uh, bring my art gallery to the festival and I'll be painting live at the festival as well oh, that's and so cool. selling artworks and then go and do my big performances and then <laughs> come back to the to the art stall and keep painting and chatting. It's so everyone. busy. It's going to be a really interesting festival. Yeah. We're absolutely so excited to see you at the festival. Oh, in <laughs> fact, that's one of mine up there. I was going to say, is it <laughs> so, one of yours? It, it's painting. amazing. Yeah. It's really, really cool. Um, so. What does training look for like for you then? Because you do so many things. Like, how do you like keep on top of it all? It, well, every stunt that I do has its own challenges and uh, difficulties. Uh, for instance, uh, when I started to learn uh, to catch arrows, I, I I had no idea that I could eventually do it blindfolded or um, catch like speeding arrows in performances like regularly and and like you know with precision i i learned to i learned to uh, uh basically i did a bunch of training on my speed reaction time uh had a bunch of techniques of, of this but it, but also uh challenging myself with all all sorts of things where i needed to you know heighten my speed reaction uh the main uh like learning tool for that stunt at the beginning was a tennis ball shooting machine and so I'd have uh, a tennis ball sh um, shooter shoot shoot balls at me, and uh, and I just have to catch them, and they can go pretty fast. And then eventually moved on to blindfold catching speeding tennis balls, and then was like, okay, well, if I could do that back then, and now I can catch an arrow, uh, I'm going to try to catch arrows blindfolded, and it worked. <laughs> so, how many hospital visits did this end in? Uh, I have. <laughs> I had a few accidents in my time, but I definitely take a lot of precautions and ease my way into performing the extreme stunts that I do. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, uh, with, with my Million Volt Man act, I um, basically what the act entails is it's a giant transformer with a <laughs> it's a, a very old school. Uh, uh, machine uh, based on Nikola Tesla's kind of original mm -hmm. design, but beefed up to <laughs> uh, to make a modern day uh, exciting act. And it's yeah, a really high voltage transformer with a, a, a big bucket upside down wrapped in copper coils. And like a high pressure hose, this uh, transformer is like a high pressure hose for electricity. So 240 volts goes in. And then a million volts sprays Spits out, out. Yeah. Um, and it's just so high voltage, it just sprays everywhere. So I take my shoes off, I stand on top of the coil and um, 
and then uh, in order so, so we're talking about the training for this stunt when I first started performing it uh, I started not performing it sorry when I first started uh, rehearsing it and training for it I I turned it on to like uh, maybe 15 percent and uh, I was like okay I'm ready go for it and they they turned it on 15 percent and it's like oh, oh, no, stop 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 turn it off turn it off it was just unbearable and yeah my heart was just pumping and uh, it was uh, I had burns on my head where the electricity was coming up my head and it was just um really really painful and it took a, it took a while to go. Okay, no, I want to I want to keep doing this, and uh, yeah, and then just kind of up to the electricity, up to the electricity until uh, until I can literally get like a meter and a half streams of uh, thick, bright lightning bolts coming out of my fingertips. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's it's so mind blowing, and it's interesting. You sort of describe, I guess, in a way you know, you work in like up to it safely. Like you, you, you know, you worked with tennis balls before you worked with anything sharp, obviously that sort of thing. It just like, obviously you've got it sort of under control and it's just amazing to hear that you put yourself in harm's way, but it's all for the entertainment. Like the show, <laughs> yeah. you know, it has to go I on. For science. I'm <laughs> yeah. a big fan of science as well. And I guess, uh, the, uh, uh the, the Tesla coil, for instance, it's it's tuned like just like an instrument. In fact, uh, so the, it's got copper coils wrapped around this bucket, and and basically the, the wires that I connect to it, uh, just like you would tune an instrument, like mm -hmm. uh, yeah, turning the key on a guitar, I'm moving the these um, these clips along the wire, and then turning it on and and trying to uh, make uh, minimum pain, maximum uh, effect yeah. with the electricity. And so eventually it's tuned perfectly to my body mass. Mm. So if someone else stood on the coil with a different mass of, of body, be that, that, then uh, it would be very dangerous or, or wouldn't have the effect as what it would have when I'm on it. So it's, so it's a yeah, very precise, uh, very uh, ch challenging, um, it's but fine amazing, <laughs> amazing fun and great effect. So yeah. what are people's reactions usually when you tell them what you do? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it, I have um, varied reactions, but I guess most people have, are pretty, uh, yeah, with the, when I describe some of these acts, it seems almost unbelievable to some people, I guess. Uh, like we'll prove like, it. <laughs> like, yeah, like if I if I told you, like uh, I could take this shark hook and put it all the way through my skull, like would you think I'm telling the truth or? <laughs> I I don't think I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I believe you based on your rapport, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to. Like, if you just randomly walked up to me in the street and was like. Do you reckon I can do this? I'd be like, nah, surely not. <laughs> you want to see it? I do, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, check it out. So shark hook, solid steel. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That was it. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <gasps> you should see the look on your face. <laughs> Relax, I've done this before. It's fine. Okay, here we go. I'm so nervous. Oh. oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. That is just, I mean, oh. how? <laughs> I completely agree. I completely agree. How did you discover that you could do that? Were you just messing about one day and thought, you know what? I reckon I could do this. Delicious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, I guess I, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. So, for instance, uh, you know, sword swallowing has been around for a long time, and I would not never be able to do what I do today if if there wasn't the great, you know, innovators of the past achieving the impossible. And once something's done, it's not impossible anymore. And then you kind of, you know, you progress and mm. take things a step further every time. So, uh, yeah, it's an amazing time to be alive for a performer and because uh, so many great things have been done in the past mm. and it just means that, that there's the, the possibilities are 
uh, almost endless. This is true. So that kind of leads me to my next question, but who specifically or what specifically like influences and inspires you? Oh, so many. Uh, I guess uh, I've always been inspired by like the Ripley's Believe It or Not book and the Guinness Book of Records. Mm. Uh, I remember like when I was a little boy, just looking through the book, just being in awe of all these amazing and unusual characters doing like incredible things that at the time I, you know, thought, you know, no, no one else could, can do these things. They're just so unique. Um, But, but I just knew that I really wanted to be in that book. So Mm. I just uh, kept practicing all all the, all, all my tricks and seeing, seeing what I could do and, at the start, I was just doing kind of like a bunch of like circus tricks and just kind of slowly progressing on my repertoire. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so now I'm I'm happy to say I've been featured in every Guinness Book of Records in the print since 2008. Wow. I've been in a whole bunch of the Guinness, uh, a whole bunch of the Ripley's Believe It or Not books on their TV shows. I've been on uh, dozens of Guinness World Records TV shows all around the world. I hosted uh, an online Guinness World Records Facebook uh, show, and I hosted that for uh, well, just over a year. And uh, and actually, in um, in the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in the Gold Coast, they've got a bronze statue of me. I when I broke the Guinness World Record, when I I swallowed twenty four swords at the same time, I had to bend all the handles and uh, strap all the blades together, and I in order. For that stunt, I have to I, I swallow hoses for three days. I use meditation and internal isolation to control the muscles of my insides. And I swallow these hoses and slowly stretch my throat out. Mm. And then, uh, and then uh, three days later, I attempt the record, the record attempt. And so I could swallow uh, 24 swords. So when I did that record, uh, I donated those swords to the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in the Gold Coast. And they put it into a bronze. Uh, yeah, we had my my body cast in in bronze, yeah. and they put the actual swords that I used for the record attempt in the sword. So now that's on display in the Gold Coast uh, Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. That is that's gonna be <laughs> such an honor too. Like you sort of that's what inspired you, but now you are part of that. Like you say, standing on the shoulders of giants, but now you're the giant. <laughs> yes. You're the one who's going yeah, out and although inspiring I, people. I, I, I do know a few giants, that are like proper giants actually, <laughs> on, um, on, one of the, <laughs> on a few of the um, Guinness World Record shows I've been on, there's been some, yeah, uh, just out of this world, amazing uh, characters. Uh, uh, I've got one photo of me uh, standing uh, next to He Ping Ping, the world's smallest man. He was mm-hmm. uh, like 62 centimetres tall. And and, the, and next to him was the world's tallest man, and I'm in between, just kind of like this, uh, kind of a gauge on yeah. how how extreme these these uh, the statues really are. Yeah, and they're actually from neighbouring villages uh, wow. in China, uh, which is quite uh, very unusual. It must very be something unusual. Ge- genetic in the in the area. But, yeah. Um, I also know uh, uh, Jo T, the world's smallest woman. Uh, she's 52 centimeters tall. She's from India. And I've, I've been on a few TV shows with her. Uh, she's most famous now for being on the American Horror Story. Yes, I have uh, seen that. Uh, yeah, on the freak, uh, freak Show, American Horror Story, and uh, so beautiful. yeah, I've got a few, few, few friends that were on that uh, that series, including Matt Fraser. He's the Seal Boy. Uh, he's got slippers yep. for arms. Yep, yeah. Um, in, in our show, so I run this um, kind of Freak Show cabaret with my partner Zoe Lamore. And we had had this show. Uh, it, used, it used to be called the Royal Family of Strange People when we were in London, and uh, Matt Fraser was in our show. Uh, that uh, he called himself Seelo the Seal Boy, uh, which is based on uh, and a, a performer from maybe around the 1930s uh, who called himself Seelo the Seal Boy, and he had the same condition, the medical condition, uh, which is actually called phocomelia, which literally means seal-like limbs. Oh. So That's very literal. Would, uh, yeah, so the original Seal Boy in the 1930s, he would perform uh, acts. Like he worked in a sideshow and he would perform. Uh, uh, act, his acts would be uh, every day um, 
uh, yeah, everyday chores that uh, that a normal person could do, but but with his little handsies, he would call them. <laughs> and uh, so he would chop a bit of wood with a saw, and he would uh, roll a cigarette, and do do a bunch of these uh, kind of everyday things that we take for granted. Mm. But just had the whole had a whole great feel that went along. So he was a really a great showman. Mm. Uh, and then Matt Fraser uh, went to Coney Island, which is the, the longest running freak show in the world. Um, and that's, uh, um, yeah, in, in New York. And yeah. so he joined that show and did a, a homage to the original Seal Boy and he did his act called The Seal Boy because he's one of the only people in the world that can do that act because yeah. he's got <laughs> flippers for arms. It's very and, unique. Um, and so he kind of recreated that act. But in, in our show, so he did a, a version of that act as well, which is a great little kind of five-minute performance. Uh, and then he did this his amazing uh, martial arts act, which is kind of what he's, uh, what he's most proud of. He's an amazing martial artist he, and um, like kickboxer and martial artist. And he can smash cement slabs with his head and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. Wow. <laughs> just, yeah, so like such a wide variety out there and just to be part of that whole scene I think would just be so eye-opening and you wouldn't ever sort of you know you wouldn't take anything for granted I think and I think it just makes you a less sort of judgmental person as well like well-rounded yeah well I've, I've got an eight-year-old daughter and uh, she's kind of seen it all you know, you know what I mean so which is quite a, a an honor to have uh, to be, have this lifestyle and have bringing up a child who is seeing all of these unusual mm. people, you know, uh, you know, some of some of our best friends and some um, and friends with our daughter, like uh, you know, the lizard man, he's completely tattooed from head to toe with green reptilian scales. He's got yeah. implants in his skull. His teeth are filed down to sharp points. His tongue is split in two like that of a lizard. I've seen, yeah. Uh, uh, Goliath is our dwarf strongman. He's just uh, one metre tall but with muscles of steel. And so... Uh, whenever she sees someone who looks different, you know, she, she will, won't look sideways because it's, it's, it's just, just, how she's just accepts up. everyone for who they are. And no matter, so yeah, no matter who you are, you've got something to give, you know? Yeah. And that's a wonderful sort of piece of advice. I think that, um, I think everyone should take into their lives, you know, don't, don't judge you don't, like you don't know. They might have the like pure heart of gold. Exactly. Definitely. So, I mean, you have done so much with your life already, but what is your ultimate fantasy? Uh, my ultimate fantasy would be uh, maybe a, a world where, you know, everyone kind of gets along, where there's the, where the climate change is, uh, you know, people take action on the, on the on climate change and make it make a real difference. You know, there's the world is, uh, I guess it's a scary place, isn't it? And there's lots of challenges ahead. And I guess, yeah, if I was going to have a fantasy rather than maybe something with unicorns or fairies, I might just have a, a beautiful world with where there's an amazing future for everyone. That's so <laughs> humble. And I think that's so potent as well with, you know, everything going on with the, you know, the election and and the change of power and I think as well having a young child, you want to have a world for them to grow up in that's, you know, that's livable. Yes. So, yeah, it's the most yeah, important thing. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, if you if you don't have a child, then, then you're living for the now. But as soon as you, as soon as you have, have a kid or... Yeah, I mean, well, you're not you're not just living in the, the now, but but when you when you have a kid, I guess you really think about the future and it's future. like, oh wow, well, yeah. what am I leaving behind? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. So if you just want to let us know really quickly what you've got going on coming up, um, and maybe where we can find you on socials, so we can hopefully come see you at your shows. Oh yeah, well, if you if you go to the Space Cowboy one on Facebook or the Space Cowboy uh, the, the Space Cowboy official on Instagram, uh, or you could just go to, to thespacecowboy.com or thespacecowboygallery.com. You can see all my artworks. Both of those websites are connected. Amazing. Um, uh, yeah, I've got a bunch coming up. 
Um, I've got a gig in Dubai with the Krusty Demons, oh. the big motorbike stunt show where they so do like cool. double backflips on motorbikes and uh, all the all the big crazy freestyle motocross stunts. Uh, yeah, my partner Zoe and I were and and our daughter were going to Glastonbury Festival, which is uh, yeah only a few weeks away. So very exciting. That's coming up, and uh, we're yeah we've got some exciting things in plan going to Norway, Spain. Uh, come back and of course buskers by the lake that's yes. going to be incredible it's, uh, <laughs> we're very a excited great to see you there festival to perform at yeah. so I'll be doing uh, busking shows because it is a busking festival so I'm going to uh, give that a crack and then also I'll be performing uh, Deja Voodoo with, which is two shows only in, in a venue as part of the buskers by the lake uh, but it's a big freak show cabaret with the, some of the wild, wildest and wackiest stunts and performers from around the world. Well, I can safely say I will be in attendance at one of those shows. Um, <laughs> definitely can't wait. I've uh, talked my partner into coming as well, so he's very excited. So we'll see you there, and we will see you at Buskers. Awesome. I look forward to it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming along and chatting to us today. I know it's a bit unconventional doing it over Zoom, but we've got to adapt. We're getting used to it by now, I think. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much, Shane. Um, again, everyone, you should follow him on all of the socials. He is such an exciting person to to um, follow and come along to Buskers and see him do his thing. Awesome. Thanks again. Thank you.